Hey guys, Unfrequented World Photography, and today I want to continue the series I started uh, last week, which is using the Kenko Pro 300 3x adapter, just to see what kind of images we can get uh, with the new A7R3. Now I want to clarify a couple things because I did get some comments. I am in no way endorsing that people run out and buy a 3x Kenko Pro adapter or any 3x adapter. Guys, the bottom line is, with the new sensor technology and the new lenses being as good as they are, you could crop with these new sensors and get very similar results to what you're going to get by slapping on the 3x converter. So I just want to throw that out there. This is just, just for fun, guys, just to show you I already own the adapter, and this is to show you the image quality you can get. So let's, let's not take this too seriously. Today what we're going to do is we've hooked up the Kenko Pro 300 onto the beloved Minolta 200HS APO one of the sharpest, best Minolta lens primes made. It's probably 30 years old, but it's a fantastic lens. Let's see what we can get for uh, shots with the three times on there, essentially making this unit a 600 millimeter unit. It's not super small, but compared to an actual 600 2.8 lens, you can handhold this, you can carry it around. So let's see what we can get for shots. The Kenko Pro 300 Tele Plus is supposed to maintain autofocus with lenses that are 2.8 or uh, greater aperture. And it does. However, the autofocus is terrible. At first I wondered if it was the LAEA4 adapter that we have on the A7R3 that was causing the really slow, horrible, um, cycling autofocus that you can't trust it to lock on anything. A standing tree, let alone a moving bird or anything. So I threw the combination of the 200 and the Kenko Pro on my A77, which has fantastic autofocus, and it was doing the exact same things. Um, today I don't have the best light. Yesterday afternoon I did have brilliant, beautiful sunlight, and it still would not focus. I'll show you guys what it'll do this morning in mediocre light, and um, this is the A7R3 combo. I'll show you that. It's, it's not great, guys, and I'll show you what I've had to do to, to resolve that. So here we are pointing at the ground and I've just uh, put it out of focus just to show you. So it's pretty slow when it will lock on. We'll do that again just to show you guys. Very slow so you would never catch anything moving and I'll show you when it won't lock on. So it won't lock onto a two inch sapling out here. There we're over three inches wide. And we have to put the focus mode in wide because it just doesn't want to lock on reliably. in any other mode. Can't even lock on to the tree branches here. So I said to myself, self, if the autofocus isn't working, you're gonna have to use manual focus, which is fine. I use it all the time, I love it with focus peaking, and all the new tools that we have on the A7R3, it's very easy to do. However, listen to what the motor sounds like with the LEA4 on here when you try to manual focus. I hope you guys can hear this. You can feel the gears moving. It's not smooth. So now I've switched to the LAEA3 adapter, which is manual focus only with this uh, Minolta lens, but listen to how silky smooth this is. So, I mean, you still hear a little bit of the lens gear moving, but there's no resistance from here anymore. It's just smooth. Forgot to mention, guys, don't forget to go into your menu and under the second camera right there, go down to steady shot settings and just make sure that you've got your uh, manual shooting set to 600 millimeters uh, in this instance when you're using the teleconverters um, the camera will not read 
what lens is on there most of the time. So, well, it doesn't with these Kenko Pros anyway. So I set mine to manual, and in this case, we're using the 200. So with the Kenko Pro, that would be uh, 600 millimeters. So how does this 600 millimeter f5.6 perform? Well, let's take a look. After looking at the results I'm getting with the 200mm and the Kenko Pro 300 three times adapter, I want to make an addendum to what I said earlier in the video, which was I couldn't see a good reason to go out and purchase one of these um, teleconverters today. I'm absolutely wrong. I'm 25 years into my photography journey and career, and if I see a lens, I want a lens, I buy a lens. However, I have to think back to when I started out. You know, dirt poor college guy who had one nice lens and didn't have a lot of choice and options in what to use, to pay $250 for one of these converters will open up a whole new um, tele telephoto range. You can take your 200 millimeter and it becomes 600 millimeters. So that is where um, this converter fits in. If you're a young guy just starting out, you don't have a lot of money, I totally recommend buying one of these. It will give you range that you just are not gonna be able to afford. Unless you can pay $1,800 for a Tamron 150-600 or a Sigma or whatever, um, this is a great option to get you into that far out range. So I will correct what I said earlier. If you're, if you're just starting out, seriously consider purchasing one of these teleconverters.